All right, we're going to do a mathematical digression into um, into something that's referred to as the backshift operator. It's going to be kind of crazy, but I, th I think crazy in the right kind of way. I think I think crazy in a pretty cool way. I'm going to show you an alternative way of expressing a time series model um, that may or may not blow your mind. All right, so let me introduce you to the letter capital B. In, in time series mathematics, we call capital B the backspace operator. And the backspace operator works in the following way. B to the power K, so capital B to the power K times Y sub T. It's weird notation, right? Because we're not really multiplying. It's almost like applying a function to it. But um, but this, this is the way the notation is applied. And and we'll see you actually can apply. You can deal with that capital B in a multiplicative way. It's yeah, it's very strange. Um, but we're going to define this. We define this 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 product as y to the power t minus k. Right. So for example. For example, b times y12 is y11, and b to the power 4 times y to the 1980 is y to the 1976, assuming that we're dealing with yearly data, right? So each, each time point is a year, so we go four years back in this case to 1979. Now, yeah, a little bit weird, right? And a little bit crazy, but even more crazy, we'll see that we could use this backshift operator to really, really, really write or express our time series models in a very concise way. First off, we can write any differencing operator as a function of the backshift operator. So that is, if we want the dth regular difference, we write that as 1 minus capital B to the power D, all right, times, you can't see me, but I'm putting like air quotes around the times, times Y sub T. So 1 minus B to the power D times Y sub D, and, and D is how many differences we want, all right, so most often that D is 1, because we're just doing a single differencing, maybe occasionally D is 2. Right, so let's look at that first regular difference. What does that first regular difference look like? So here's our z sub t. We want to uh, write it as 1 minus b to the power 1, right, because we're doing that first difference times y sub t. I can distribute. So a lot of these multiplicative rules still work. So I can distribute that y sub t through the parentheses. So now I have y sub t minus b y sub t. And by definition, b y sub t is y sub t minus 1. So lo behold, right, there in fact is the formula for the first regular difference. Second regular difference, right, um, so that's 1 minus b squared times y sub t. So again, it really does have these like multiplicative properties. So I can just say, all right, what is 1 minus b times 1 minus b? So if I multiply that out, right, if I, if I do my foiling, I get 1 minus 2b plus b squared times y sub t. I distribute the y sub t through. I get y sub t minus 2b y sub t plus b squared y sub t. And then now I, I apply that backshift operator, and I have y sub t minus 2 times y sub t minus 1 plus y sub t minus 2. Yeah, maybe pause it, look, look at it for a second or two, and uh, kind of soak it all in. All right, we're not doing anything too crazy other than just kind of learning how this backshift operator works. All right, b to the power 2 means, means shift it back two times. I can write seasonal differencing as 1 minus b to the power l, right, where l is the, the number of periods in a year, 
um, or number of observations in a period, I guess maybe I should say it. Um, so right often we're dealing with monthly data, so that L will be 12. So to the power capital D, all right, and that capital D is however many seasonal differences we want to do. So again, capital D will often be one, maybe sometimes be two. So I can I can put it all together, right? I can say um, I could say z sub t is equal to one minus b times one minus b to the power l. So that's that's the the first regular difference and the first seasonal difference, right? How cool is that? So I can combine these things. So it's sort of one minus b to the power one. 1 minus b to the power l, that quantity, the power 1, right? First regular difference, first seasonal difference. And I just, I multiply it through. So 1 times 1 is 1, minus b times 1 is minus b, minus b to the power l times 1 is minus b to the l. And again, right, just like, um, just like normal multiplicative properties, negative b or minus b times minus b to the l is minus b to the l plus one i multiply that times y sub t distribute the y sub t through right now i have my back shift operator right b to the power l times y sub t is just saying apply the back shift operator to y sub t apply it l times and so we end up getting y sub t minus y sub t minus one minus y sub t minus capital l minus y sub t minus capital l plus one so this backshift operator allows us in a pretty nice and concise way to like figure out like what any combination of differences looks like, right? So sometimes we've sort of taken like some crazy differences, maybe like the first regular difference and first seasonal difference. We've, we've certainly done that before, I think, I think in a recent lab. And right now we can, we can see pretty easily and straightforwardly like what that actually would look like in terms of, uh, in terms of our Y's, in terms of our dependent variable. Now, not only can we use the backshift operator as a way of um, expressing differencing, we could also use the backshift operator as a way to concisely express our ARIMA and moving average models. So we could write an autoregressive model as a pth order polynomial in B times Z sub T. All right, so that 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 little that little expression over there, phi sub p parentheses b times z sub t is basically saying, right, a polynomial of order b in p with coefficients phi. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Dr. Seuss book, right? Like a Dr. Seuss book gone wrong. Uh, right, times that z sub t. We can do the same for moving average models, right? That is, a moving average model is a qth order polynomial in B times A sub T. So, so let's take a look at, at what this what this means. All right, so um, here here's a second order moving average model. So Z sub T equals delta. And then I just write out this second order polynomial. So what does the second order polynomial look like? It looks like one minus uh, theta one B minus theta two B squared times A sub T, right? I distribute the A sub T through. So now I have delta plus A sub T minus theta one times B times A sub T minus theta two B squared A sub T. Again, after I say this, it might be worth pausing it and just kind of thinking about it a little bit. Right, because I might be talking faster than you could think it through. Now I just apply the backshift operator, right? So so B applied to A sub T, that just moves A sub T back one. So that's A sub T minus one. B squared times A sub T, that says apply the backshift operator two times to A sub T. So that gives me A sub T minus two. And if I look at that now, that is, right, that is exactly the formula for a second order moving average model. Wow, pretty cool. All right. What does a third order autoregressive model look like? Now notice, right, this might be a little unexpected, 
but I start with the polynomial. I start by putting the polynomial over on the left-hand side of the equation. And let's see how it works out. So on the left-hand side, I have 1 minus V1B minus V2B squared minus V3B cubed, right? Third order times e sub t. I got the delta and the a sub t on the right-hand side. So let's distribute the z sub t through. All right, so we did that. What do we have to do next? Exactly. What we have to do next is we have to apply the back shift operator to z sub t. So b times z sub t is z sub t minus 1. b squared times z sub t is z sub t minus 2. b cubed to z sub t is z sub t minus 3. So that I've, I've got that done. And maybe at, at first blush, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like, um, like our usual autoregressive equation. But what if I were to take everything other than z sub t and move it now to the right-hand side of the equation, right? Take all the phi terms and move them to the right-hand side of the equation. And there we go, right? Lo, behold, now this looks exactly like our third order autoregressive um, equation. We can do both of them at the same time, right? So we can have a mixed model. And we can add two other polynomials that are polynomials in the power of b to the power l, right? So that polynomial would look like b to the l, b to the 2l, b to the 3l, b to the 4l. Right, and it would be very concisely like that. So I have potentially two polynomials times z. That's my autoregressive component. What seasonal, one non-seasonal, equals delta plus two polynomials in theta, one seasonal, one non-seasonal, times a sub t, where we define z sub t, right? We could still keep using that backshift operator as one minus b to the power small d, times 1 mi minus b to the l to the power of big D times that y star, right? y star is, um, right, our y variable after potentially applying a pre-differencing transformation to achieve a common variance. Whew! So there's a lot there, right? So I could write, like, the most complicated ARIMA model that I could think of does have, like, a pretty concise closed form format. So why why teach this to you? Um, for a couple reasons. Um, reason number one, right, in, in a recent class we talked about the idea that it's not necessarily straightforward how we would write or combine um, seasonal and non-seasonal models of the same type, right? Do you remember we said that? Right, when, we, when we did our lecture on seasonal ARIMA models, I wrote out an example of like one of them's autoregressive and one of them's moving average, right? But I said, if, if your seasonal and non-seasonal models are both autoregressive, it's, it's hard to know how to write that model out. Well, now we know how to do it. If you want to know how to write out that model, you just set up the polynomials like I showed in the previous slides. You set up those polynomials, you multiply the polynomials by one another, and then you distribute the either the z through or the a through, depending on whether we're working with autoregressive or moving average. So that's one reason, right? This is this is how we can always write down or always know like what our model equation looks like, right? Armed with this formula and the backshift operator, we can now write the model equation for any for any combination of seasonal non-seasonal models. Second, right? If you're going to dig a little deeper, if you're going to do some research on your own, if you're going to if you're going to try to find like books that are the next level of complexity. And if you're going to read the SAS help files, the SAS help files, for example, much of them are written using this backshift operator. That is, I think the like the 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 formula that SAS uses in its help files is the formula that we're looking at right here. So to to be best equipped to deal with like these help files, you need to understand what this backshift operator is. Um, how it works, and how it's used to express our model equation and differencing operator. 
Now, one pretty cool implication, there's lots of implications, but one pretty cool implication of this, right, that becomes even more mind-boggling or even more mind-blowing is that I have these polynomials, right? And I can show now that these conditions that we talked about before, right, these the moving average and um, autoregressive model conditions, um, you know, more specifically the invertibility and stationarity condition, all boil down to looking at the roots of this equation, right? So I have a polynomial equation. I have a polynomial equation in B, and right, polynomial equations all have roots, right? A fifth degree polynomial has five roots. Some of those roots might be real, some of those roots might be complex, but it has five roots. And so the invertibility condition could be written as basically saying that all of the roots of that, of that moving average polynomial are outside of the unit circle and the autoregressive um, conditions are that all of the roots have to lie outside of that unit circle. Yeah, pretty cool. So again, it gives us it gives us this, this backshift operator gives us a really nice way to concisely represent our differencing operation, a way to concisely represent um, pretty complicated ARIMA formulas, and then finally, right, it gives us a very concise way of writing the the conditions that we need for um, either invertibility or stationarity right depending on which type of model we're working with all right so kind of scratching the surface a little bit you could do a lot more with these backshift operators um, but this would kind of like lay the groundwork for kind of where you would go or what you would need if you wanted to go deeper into um, into some of this time series analysis stuff